my name is Dana Autani. Uh, I'm a Palestinian Saudi artist. Uh, I'm currently living and working in Jeddah. Uh, so the first work that we're going to talk about is uh, Listen to My Words. It's the most uh, meaningful piece for me because I feel it's one of the first works where I really departed from the traditional and talk about more cultural, social issues. I always I thought that in terms of Arabic poetry, it's mostly a male-dominated space. Like all the poets that you know about are Rumi, Hafiz, Ibn Arabi and you don't really see much or hear much about Arab female poets. And I came across this incredible book that was just dedicated to female poets from the 7th century up to the 12th century. And I found them so inspirational because they were really powerful. They were speaking from a really kind of, um, a space where it allowed them to talk and be empowered and open, where I feel that nowadays it's not like that anymore for women in the region. So what I did is I, um, re-recorded a selection of these poems with a group of Saudi women and uh, I also did seven screens which are hand embroidered that are inspired by Jali's which are also called Mishrabiyas which are the screens that are usually used for women to sit behind to protect the women from the male gaze so it's a space that you're supposed to walk around in and just you know it's it is peaceful it is something that's quite serene and, and dimly lit but also it's interjected with these sort of powerful uh, poetry that creates this juxtaposition. The way it's laid out as well is each screen has uh, its own audio coming out so I created it in a way where these women are speaking to one, one each other. It's a bit like uh, the traditional majlises where women or men would sit and talk to one another and recite poetry and the audio was done in a way so it's moving sound so you feel like you're surrounded by different people talking to you at different times in different spaces. <laughs> The next work that's made is uh, a glass work and it's called to be seen but not be seen. The idea behind this work is when I was researching more about Mishrabiyas, you know, they always say that it's something incredible because it allows women to be protected from the male gaze. And I found that to be quite problematic um, because it was really kind of projecting the internal space as the female and the external space as the masculine. And that work is kind of like, the piece looks at the negative spaces that where the light shines through a Mishrabiya. Um, and they're just made up of triangles and hexagons, which is the basics of all the patterns I've used for all the screens and embroidery. Another piece is the, titled The Diwans of the Unknown. And uh, all the poems that were used in the installations are diwans, so they're short couplets. And uh, also when you find books you know, about diwans, it's diwans of all these different men. And what I did is I, I created the same, I, um, the idea of a sort of a book, a book that's never been written, that should be written. And I used the poems from these Arab women. So the, the idea as well is it's a, it's a book of poetry of, that's never been written and should be written. So it's, there's projection on it where the poetry appears and disappears at different spaces and intervals throughout the book. So it's like there's literally ghosts from the past that are speaking to you. The works right behind me, the platonic solids, purely formal pieces that look at the fundamentals of geometry. So I'm, geometry is a thing that is present throughout all my works and um, Plato created these five shapes called the platonic solids and they're the only five perfect shapes that fit harmoniously within a sphere. What I did is I created kind of contemporary sculptures based on that philosophy where I'm looking at the platonic solid jewels, so how they fit one inside one another and the thing that's important about them is they're the fundamentals of all forms of geometry and architecture and any form of 3D space and uh, so the works on the left are the 
kind of study drawings of the wood veneers that were used on the inside, so each one has a technical drawing related to it. And I love to do my drawings in a way that are progressional, so people are able to understand the process of the drawings rather than seeing the end result. And I think it's very important to break that down rather than just seeing a pretty pattern. You know, understanding the, the complexity and the layers to creating that pattern is so beautiful. The painting work, which is uh, the Cal Islamic Caliphates, is uh, rooted in my traditional training I've been doing in Turkey. And I love, I, I'm absolutely in love with uh, illumination, also called Tazheeb, but the problem is when I'm there, I learn a lot from these craftswomen and how to draw and how to paint. But the ideas of why it's there or what does it mean or why they use these motifs is completely gone and no one knows. And I felt that the, the mind was kind of detached from the hand in a way. And so what I did is I started researching the, the beginning and the evolution of illumination throughout history, beginning from the Rashidun period, which is just a gold dot, all the way to the end, which is the Ottomans, where it's become highly embellished. And the beauty about illumination is it doesn't belong to one culture. So um, the Mughals, the Persians, so the Safavids, sorry, um, the Abbasids, the, all of them have contributed and created this one art form. And I love that idea of this collective identity through illumination. And then lastly, the last piece um, is uh, Love is my law, love is my faith. And these eight love poems are considered to be some of the most beautiful forms of love poetry in Arabic literature history. Each of the layers is supposed to be representative of one of the poems where it ends with the gold dot, which is the end of this journey. It's like ultimate enlightenment.